الصبح بدا من طلعته والليل دجا من وفرته فقر رسلا فضلا وعلا أهدى الصبلا لدلالته الصبح بدا أزكى النسب أعلى الحسب كل العرب في خدمته كل العرب في خدمته الصبح بدا من طلعته شق القمر بإشارته جبريل أتى ليلة أسرى والرب دعا لحضرته والرب دعا لحضرته الصبح بدا عما سلف من أمته فمحمدنا هو سيدنا فالعز لنا لإجابته فالعز لنا لإجابته الصبح بدا من طلعته Briefly, the uh, birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and uh, I wanted to share this hadith with you that I found, as documented by Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, where Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, he said, "Indeed, I am written 
or recorded as the servant of Allah in the mother of all books, meaning in the preserved tablet. I am written and listed there as the servant of Allah and uh, as the seal of all prophets. And I was written as the servant of Allah and the seal of all prophets at the time when Adam السلام, was laying in his clay. Meaning Adam السلام, was still being formed. And then he said, and I will inform you of the interpretation of that. Meaning it's all linked. It's linked to the prayer of my father Abraham. The prayer of my father Ibrahim. Nabi Ibrahim السلام, when he uh, was erecting or, or building the, the walls of the Kaaba, raising the foundations, him and his son Ismail السلام, Allah documents in Surah Baqarah, if you go around verse 125, 126, 127 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah documents du'as, prayers that Nabi Ibrahim السلام, and Nabi Ismail السلام, made. The first is one that we make. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Oh, our Lord, accept from us. Really, you are the all hearing and the all knowing. That's the first prayer that the, the two of them made. Then they made a prayer, Oh Allah, make us of those who are truly offering peace to you, truly in submission to you, Muslim, and make of our progeny, our descendants, a nation that offers peace and show us our rituals and accept our repentance really you are the offspring giving most merciful we can make that dua it's also allowed but the third dua that they made is this one that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is referring to that we are not allowed to make it even if we make it we will be wasting our breath the prayer they made at that time after raising the foundations of the kaaba is, oh our Lord, send amongst our progeny a messenger from them who will recite your verses to them and who will teach them wisdom and the book, scripture, and who will purify them. Really, you are the Almighty and the all wise. So Nabi Ibrahim السلام, along with Nabi Ismail السلام, following him made a dua asking that Allah must, Allah must send a messenger amongst their progeny. So therefore Nabi Muhammad وسلم, says yeah, I am the prayer of my father Ibrahim. And then he said and I am the glad tiding of Isa Jesus. Uh, Nabi Isa alayhi salam as documented by Allah in Surah al saf I mentioned to this, this to you, I think, Saf is chapter 61. Yeah, 61. Uh, Allah says, Nabi Isa alayhi salam said to the Bani Israel, Israelites, He said to them, Really, I am the messenger of Allah to you. I come to confirm all that is in the Torah, and I come to give you give you glad tidings of a messenger that is coming after me and his name is Ahmad. The most praised. So it's a glad tiding. And therefore Nabi uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, I am the glad tiding of Isa. But then the third thing he says here which I wanted to share with you. He says, I am the vision of my mother. Allah tiraat, which she, which she saw that they exited from her. What a light. I am that light now. I am the vision of my mother, which she saw coming out of her as a light. The palaces of Sham were lit up, illuminated because of it. And there's a narration I'm going to come to uh, regarding Sayyidah Halima. A conversation be between Sayyidah Halima and Ali.
But then the hadith ends with something interesting. He then says, وَكَذَلِكَ تَرَى أُمَّهَاتُ النَّبِيِّينَ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ He says, and likewise, the mothers of the prophets, they had also seen. Meaning the mothers of all the prophets before, except Nabi Adam Why not? He had a mother or father. But the, Anbiya, uh, the mothers of all the prophets before had also seen, meaning, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, they had also seen a nur when they gave birth to their sons who had this bright, physically and metaphorically bright future. Future of nur, filled with nur of iman. Uh, then, um, what do you call the woman who helped the, uh, the pregnant woman give birth at home? Midwife. He, he, she had two midwives. The, the other names. One's name was Fatima bint Abdullah al Thaqafiyya. She was the mother of a companion. And he is the one. He is the one who narrates his mother having said that she was there when Amina gave birth to Nabi Muhammad. Her name was Fatima, the daughter of Abdullah. She told her son, who was a Sahabi, she also accepted Islam. But her son, the famous Sahabi Uthman ibn Abil Aas, he narrates, my mother said she was a midwife, one of the two midwives, when Amina gave birth, and she said, we helped her, and we saw a light, and uh, when we went out as well, the stars seemed brighter, and the stars seemed as if they were gonna draw closer and closer to us. And everywhere I looked, it lit up. And who else was there? Another Sahabi's mother. He is famous, and she has a unique name. He is well known for his riches, Abdul Rahman bin Auf. Abdul Rahman bin Auf, when they made Hijrah, he did not want to accept any wealth or any help from the Ansar. Even though a brotherhood was made, he, he had too much self pride to, to accept from others. So he, he rather said, Just show me where the marketplace is, and I'll say to myself. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard this, that he wanted to do business, and Nabi made a special dua for him. Allah must bless him in all his efforts. He said, Allah blessed my hand, my deal so much. Abdul Rahman bin Auf, he says, Allah blessed my deals so much that I, I became anxious if I had to lift a rock, for example, maybe remove a rock from the road or whatever. Because I feel I might find some money under it. So Allah blessed my touch. He said, I would never refuse a deal. Some of his secrets of business. I would never refuse him. I want to do a deal, I do a deal. But he says, I would never take money on the book. Obscult, no? It's all cash. But anyway, his mother was also there. And her name was Shifa. What does Shifa mean? A cure. Now, she was also a midwife. And she narrates the same. I helped Amina and we saw a light. Surprising Noor. Now, she gave birth at night. Fatima bint Abdullah, she mentions this. So the noor that they saw was even more evident because it was nighttime. Some scholars say it happened or the time of birth was the last few hours of the night before Fajr time. Before Fajr, and it's a Mubarak time. It's a blessed time. May Allah grant us strength to be up at that time. Now. Okay. And then we mentioned one last thing, Thuwayba, last week. Is there a question? Any questions? Thuwayba is the diminutive form of the word Thawab, like we said. So, all I mentioned last week was that Thuwayba was also there assisting. She was helping because you need a nurse with the midwife. Now, water, cotton, other material, whatever. Um, Thuweba was the assisting, and Thuweba was the slave girl of who? Abu Lahab. So Abdullah was his brother. And now Abdullah had passed on, and Abdullah's wife is giving birth, or she's in her labor, pangs and pains. And so he, he sends his uh, slave girl to help. So the only thing we mentioned last week was that 
after she had given birth, uh, Amin had given birth, so Waiba then went and gave Abu Lahab the glad tidings of his new nephew. His, his deceased brother's son. And uh, Abu Lahab set her free. He set her free. And we mentioned as well last week uh, what Al Imam Ibn Hajar documents in the commentary of Bukhari about Abu Lahab being seen afterwards after he died. And he's informing uh, the dreamer about punishment being lessened for him on a Monday where he sucks some liquid out of his thumb. No. But uh, what I did not mention to you was also uh, that um, she had this Tuwaiba, had milk because she had a, 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 an infant that she had given birth to not long before, <coughs> herself, uh, a son, a boy. And his name was Masruh with a seen and a ha. Mas So she had milk and some, we, we know that uh, Amina uh, uh, nursed him, she gave him, uh, she, she fed him, Amina fed him, and they say that Thuwaiba is the first to feed Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after Amina. Sayyida Amina fed him first and then uh, maybe she needed time to recover. But uh, this is also something else and we're going to, uh, okay, I mention it now. Uh, we have a narration where Sayyida Halima uh, narrates, uh, we're coming to, where Sayyida Amina spoke with her. This is now four years later. Four years later, I'm jumping ahead, but I need to mention this now. Um, uh, Amina had witnessed people giving birth before. And she said that she did not experience what she may have seen in others when they gave birth of pain and distress. It felt light and eased for her. But when did she say this? Later. No. Okay. So now Thuwaiba gave birth, and uh, Masruh is her son. Thuwaiba. Who's Thuwaiba Hajar? Just checking for the back flank now. Weber is now the freed slave. And she hangs around because she, 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 she was in slavery for long, maybe even born in slavery. She doesn't just leave. But there's something significant here. Uh, she hangs around and she is now seen to be uh, sincere in her, in, in, her, in her quest to assist and aid. And they allow her, seeing as she has milk, they allow her to nurse Nabi Muhammad. But it was not uncommon because who was also born not long before was Hamza, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uncle. They were like almost just say just a year apart. Now, Abdullah, Abdul Muttalib's other son. Now, and uh, Thuwaiba nursed him as well. So not only was Hamza, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uncle, but it was also his milk brother, just as Masroo. Some say Thuwaiba, don't know how strong the reports are, but Thuwaiba may have nursed him for almost four months. <coughs> Helped on and off, you know, easing the uh, load or easing the way for Sayyidah Amina to recover. But it seems she was not of good health. It seems. Uh, and, but not long after that, uh, uh, the issue of the, of the Bedouins coming into Mecca to look for infants that they could nurse. But something about Thuwaiba, what happened to her after? Because many of the books don't mention her again. But I, we found something in the old, in the old uh, records that she accepted Islam when he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was allowed to proclaim the mission publicly. Okay? Not only that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to honor her and used to send her gifts like material and clothing until she passed away. And I say the Khadija, Rajallahu Anha, 
Or when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was now married, obviously with her, and so so the so lived on. Uh, so Khadija also used to do the same. The same. Meaning, Anna Thuwaiba. She passed away in the seventh year after the Hijrah, and her son Masruh passed away before her. That's the only record I could find. Okay. This is a question we asked uh, last week. Yeah, this is the last I asked. Why did the Arabs have the infants nursed by Bedouins? So we said fresher air, simpler life, learning patience through tending to sheep, uh, eloquent language, develop appreciation for the finer city life. You may have been from the city, but had they grown up there, they would not have known better. Uh, with all the eases, even though it's far different to our lives, but we learn to appreciate what we have once we leave. Is it not? No. So that's it. And they had this custom of uh, having their infants nursed for at least two or even sometimes three years. In his case, four years. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But it was also of benefit to the Bedouins because the, 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 their lives were simple but uh, it was tough and through this they could gain either kind meaning goods or they could gain some some wealth pieces of silver pieces of gold which they could use in uh, uh, whatever uh, uh, barter and opportunities for opportunities for business with trading caravans so they benefit the Bedouins benefited they were paid for it in cash or in kind and therefore therefore uh, of the initial nurses that came into Makkah, they did not want to go to him, Nabi Muhammad Wasallam. Why not? Because they had no father. Once they heard that he was an orphan, they were hesitant to get involved because they thought they would not get paid. And even though Abdul Muttalib, Abdul Muttalib was chief of Makkah, there were some constraints he was going through. There were some needs in the community and he was spending beyond his means and by the time Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ended up by him later, Abdul Muttalib was not so affluent anymore. Hajjah with me? Sorry for the ladies in the back. You know the Turks, I don't know, you see in their massage, they have these huge uh, members and they have these huge chairs or seats with the imams, or the pre-talks or the lessons of us. Uh, and you would think why it wasn't for themselves. It was more for the audience to be able to see them. No. In the Quran, I give you a side gem. In the Quran, uh, wherever Allah says, I have given you hearing and sight. Hearing and sight. Allah uses the singular form of hearing and Allah uses the plural form of sight. Like in Surah Mulk, you all know. Qul huwa alladhi anshaakum wa ja'ala lakum sam'a Allah says, He's the one who has formed you. And He granted you hearing and sight. Now in English, you won't pick it up. But in Arabic, you'll see sam is singular. Whereas abusar is the plural of basar. Why is sam singular? And why is basar in plural? Why? Because in a, the simple understanding is this. In a gathering, if something is being uttered, generally, what you hear is the same thing. But your gazes may be different places. So your sights will be different. No? And then the last is wal afida and hearts. Why will hearts also be in plural? Because what you're feeling or some the afida is not qalb. Afida is more the emotional or sensing heart. What you feel, what you experience is also different, even though you may hear the same thing. So the hearing is one, but the sights are different, Hajjah. And what you feel may be different. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam devising or deciding on that, you would have had all plurals, isn't it? Mm. Or all singular, isn't it? Mm. No, this is not from him. And not that I'm saying you must look at me or like that I like to be looked at, but <laughs> it helps just to focus maybe. No, sorry. For so, yes, they. Uh, were deterred because he was an orphan. And in the end, she again 
Halima narrates this afterwards. She narrates that we were in dire straits. There was somewhat of a famine out there in the deserts, and we came on a, a lean camel. Atan is a female camel. She, she don't, and it was only one for her. And at times she felt sorry for the camel. She rather walked next to it. And uh, she had one son with her, Abdullah. Halima, a Saadiya, she had a son. And she had two daughters. I mentioned their names here. I'll say their names now. Um, but she uh, found that Allah's decree um, from place to place, children were taken. In the end, the only one who was without a witness was Nabi Muhammad وسلم, and she told her husband I'm shy to be returning to our area when all our colleagues the other ladies who went out all of them have children and we don't have anyone with us so we just take him little did she know she had the best deal so she took him and she said something happened I once I held him to my breast I started feeling stronger she says Uh, we, we're entering a space where, where the, the worldly realm and the unseen realm started now merging. Nabi Muhammad was being prepared. From the nur his mother saw, to these experiences now here, to the angels that are going to come to him, etc. Things changed because he's not any human being. The human being, yes, but his body is now is to be, be prepared uh, for, um, for revelation. And then there's the ayah. Listen to this for the Arabic students. You know the ayah, first of Bani Israel. Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al harami ila al masjid al aqsa alladhi barakna hawla hu. Glory be to the one who journeyed with his servant at night from al masjid al aqsa to, or from al masjid al haram to al masjid al aqsa. But then Allah, so Allah mentions two masjids, right? But then Allah says, Alladhi, which is singular. Barakna hawlahu. Hawlahu, the one who we had blessed all around him. Allah mentions two masjids, and aren't both blessed? Yes. But Allah says, traveled with his servant at night from the one masjid to the other masjid. Alladhi, he who. But nobody will translate it as it. Hey, that place. Meaning the masjid, which Allah had blessed Allah. But there are scholars who think that the damir there, or alladhi, is referring to the abd. That's a contentious. But we say without a doubt, the Messiah was blessed. Isn't it? So she said, Halima, the moment I held him to my chest, some things changed. I felt lighter. I felt more happy and joyous. And I felt stronger. And it wasn't long before even the, the, the ride we were on, seemed more nippy, seemed more vigorous, seemed more uh, energetic now. And then I noticed I, 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 I felt more light and open and my, my breast started feeling better. And when I put him to me, he suckled. And I, she, she, things happened, blessings. And then she spoke about the sheep back home when they came, the sheep used to lay around, they were all running around. <laughs> and what, if they have goats or whatever else, the Allah knows best things were just on a high and uh, uh, she mentioned to her husband the, the, the child is the difference here because we are the same people that came back it's the same place the only difference is this child is here it must be the child um, a son Abdullah and two daughters Anisa and, and uh, this is an uncommon name Hudhafa Hudhafa is, is, is a, a name uh, where you see the, 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 the male name also, Hudhaifa. Now, Hudhaifa speaks of excessive beauty. But she, she developed a, 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 a title or like a nickname that she is more known for and which people in our community give their daughters. She was known more as Shema. Shema is someone with distinctive features. So who are these? The two daughters of Sayyidah Halima. Okay, so now I'll mention to you something about them as we go along. But first, four years had passed. When did the unique incident with the angels take place? 
So he was playing with Abdullah. Abu Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was playing with Halima's son. Like they normally play to spend time. And it was around the age of four. He was long there. And we understand or believe that there were times when Halima would take him to visit his mother and family. But she developed an attachment to him. Which is natural. And uh, one day, Abdullah came back to the uh, tents without Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was distraught. He was panicking and he was worried. So his mother and his father, his father's name, by the way, was Harith, Halima's husband. Al Harith. Harith. Uh, they asked him, oh, where's Muhammad? What happened? So he said, two men came there with white robes and they placed Muhammad on the floor and then they were busy by his chest. So they ran out with him to lead them as to where Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu was supposed to be. We believe this happened because he said it. And I'll tell you something else. So they came to him. There was no one there by him. But he looked pale. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked pale. And they asked him what happened. And then he narrates. Now he, 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 Halima mentions this. I'm going to tell you now. He said something to her. Halima got so concerned and so worried that they packed up and left for Makkah uh, because uh, uh, she, she was scared something would happen with him whilst... Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay? So uh, when they came to uh, Amina and Halima narrated to Amina, what the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, because he said, these two men came, they laid me down, and he said, they opened my chest, and they took my heart, they took a part of me, and they placed it in water, some scholars say it's a zamzam, and they took something from it, something dark from it, and threw it, and placed my, my heart back, and then they closed me up. Stan Hajar, now, cardiologists will tell you, surgeons, that the heart has to be placed in some cold liquid if they were to do whatever, transfers or, uh, what do you call it? Put the, put the what in? <laughs> Stents in, yeah. <laughs> but the heart has to be kept cold and all. Yeah, I'm a, anyway, but this is, this is the physical and the non-physical merging, man, because it was two angels. First heart operation, forget, what's his name? <laughs> Why not, yeah. Anyway, but there is something here. So now Halima, but the two points I want to make, which is very, very significant. Halima, so it's a miracle, right? It's a miracle. Um, scholars say, before we go into that meeting between Halima and Amina, and what, what Amina then told her, here people say, scholars say, it is most likely the, the share or the portion of shaitan that's removed from his heart. Now this is something that baffled me for years and I found something. Right? I think about this Hajjah. Um, and uh, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam later, when Anas also and the Sahaba read this incident, because he told them too, this happened to me then. Um, they said, he said, oh, uh, they removed the share of shaitan from my heart. The hav. Right? So scholars interpret this, listen, this is very, very important for the mothers. They say it could be what was removed from his, from his heart, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is the possible influence that Shaitan could have had on him later. But that bothered me. You with me? But then I found a book recently by Sheikh Muhammad Alawi Al-Maliki. And he, it bothered him too, like it may bother other scholars, because Nabi Sallallahu did not elaborate he just said they removed the share of shaitan from my heart. Right? So he said, he was thinking, 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 pondering, and he made dua, and then it, something came to him. That he says, someone else may have documented, but I have not found, and I, I feel it's my duty to document here, it could mean this. He says, 
Wasn't Nabi Muhammad SAW sent as a mercy for, for, to the world? Right? And being merciful and, and having empathy for others and feeling kindness for others comes from within. Comes from the spiritual heart. And the physical heart has a connection to the spiritual heart. Naam. So, so if Nabi Muhammad SAW was sent as a mercy to the world, it includes shaitan. Because it's part of the world. Right? So they remove from his heart any share of mercy that he may or could have shown towards your tongue. Ya salam. Because he made dua for his enemies on the battlefield. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He made dua and he's dua something else. He made dua for his enemies on the battlefield of Uhud. When he was injured and Sahaba told him, just make one dua against them. He said, I have not been sent to curse people. I have been sent as a mercy. And then he raised his hands. And he, said, he said, he raised his hands immediately. And he said, oh Allah, guide my people. Because they don't know. And all of them accepted Islam later. But, understand? Then the other thing I want to mention to you is this. Later, in the Medina period, there was a young companion who spent time with Nabi Muhammad Wasallam So much so, that Nabi Wasallam allowed him to see things. And was young. Took him like a son. Who is that? Anas. <coughs> Anas bin Malik. Anas says, I used to see Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without a shirt sometimes in the house. Without a shirt. And he describes Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's torso. Now, I'm not going to describe that to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's in our books. In Shamayla Tirmidhi. But one thing I want to say. He says, I saw a thin line. Which is uncommon. A thin line from Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's right here. From his nape. His nape. To above his navel. Score. So Halima comes with Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they speak to Amina and they and she says this happened, or he claims this happened. And she Halima says Amina was not surprised. <laughs> She was not surprised. She then <coughs> said, that only adds to what I already know. And I know that this boy of mine will have a special future. Okay? For the Arabic students, I can get to the Arabic again, but it's in those lines. And then she, in this instance, Amina, tells Halima about that Noor again that she saw. You with me? So Halima also narrates, Amina told me this, after I went to her, after the incident of the angels, Amina then told me, I I'm not surprised, this only adds to what I already know, because when I gave birth to him, I saw this nur, and not only was it a physical nur, but it was a, it was an, a, a, a magical light, through which I could see other, I saw other places, things opened up for me, so it wasn't just a physical sight, it was, an, it was some insight, <coughs> And I was in charge of place and time, space and time. I was in charge. You wouldn't believe that after Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came back from the Isra al-Mi'raj, the next day he was sitting in the Hijr Ismail and the Quraysh came to him. You believe that they asked him, okay, we have travelers here, we have gone along that route. This, you claim to have been there. You have not been there with any of us. You claim to have gone there alone last night, in the, in the portion of a night. Describe to them what you saw. And you know our hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah opened up for me. I could see Al-Aqsa and all, to the, and it was so clear, I could count the pillars and count the windows. And tell them so many of this, so many of that, and that's how this is designed, and that's how that works. Open up. charge. فَعَالُ لِمَا يُرِيدُ Allah can do what he wants. And then these were not other, these were not any people, He's of the best of people. No one else like him. Tayyib, was there any interaction between the Prophet وسلم, and the family of Halima later in his life? Yeah, we have a narration in Ibn Ishaq, and I think uh, Martin Link's documents this in his book. Sorry? This one?
after he was married to Khadija radiallahu anha after he was married to Khadija radiallahu anha there is a narration there that she entered Mecca looking for him and she found him so he was 25 over 25 they interacted and she mentioned to him like before you left or like before we had you Muhammad it was tough out there when you were, when you were with us we were all blessed we're back in a similar state it's a bit tough she complained about the situation and Khadija heard the conversation asked who she was etc she felt a soft spot for her and she gave her 40 sheep amongst other things Khadija gave Khadija must have loved him in the other way did Halima or any of her family members accept Islam so generally we don't hear about her after the but we have narrations that the battle of Hunayn some say it happened then hold, hold on with me yeah you take the pick it's okay but some say she had already accepted Islam she and her husband before this she and Harith but the issue of Hunayn and Khaybar happened around the same time it happened around the 8th year after the Hijrah listen 8th year after the Hijrah when um, Mecca was conquered and lots of tribes from all over the peninsula entered Mecca who uh, felt now more comfortable to accept Islam some scholars say that the truth of the deen was apparent to all you with me? <coughs> but there were two large tribes that the other smaller tribes were fearful of who the, they were fearful of the Quraysh and they were fearful of the Ghatfan tribe who was the bigger tribes of the north and then they knew they were waiting for a sign to, to make them uh, to urge them to accept Islam and when the news spread that Makkah was conquered meaning the Quraysh had submitted and Makkah had become a, a, a space of Islam Darul Islam the other smaller tribes in the peninsula felt a bit uh, uh, it, easier to accept so now there was an influx so around this time the Banu Sa'ad those um, the clan of Sayyidah Halima they also came in so he was reunited with her so some say it's at that time that she accepted Islam others found some narrations say it was before but Allah A'lam but at that time we know something happened because she was not familiar to the to the Muslims and those around Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu so then they saw him honoring this Bedouin woman and Allah uh, uh, Abu uh, Tufail and others they say we inquired who is that Bedouin woman Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi sitting with because they saw him take off his shawl and lay it out for her and tell her, told her sit. and then he sat next to her and was sitting talking intently no one else met it he was just asking her speaking with her so then they came to her afterwards it was his mother you with me and uh, they, they said that he assigned certain things to her as well because she wanted, she knew Bedouin life even though he made, he made an invitation to her and later he made an invitation to her, to her daughter Shema Shema was taken captive yeah, it's on the next, on the next uh, slide but uh, Sayyidah Khadija what do we have now? she accepted Islam, Alhamdulillah right? Uh, they were reunited, Alhamdulillah and then we also have it that the last period of her life she came and settled in Medina because we have record that she passed away in Medina and she is buried in Baqiyah and she died around the ninth year so Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was about 61 then 62, close to 62 so she must have been of a good age okay then we have a narration Firstly, if, if you were to type in uh, the son, Abdullah bin Al-Harith Al-Sa'di, you will have him noted among the Sahaba. So Abdullah, <coughs> the son of Al-Harith, and there were there's about three with this initial name among the Sahaba. But if you type in here Al-Sa'di, because he was from Banu Sa'd, Scholars note him amongst the companions of Rasulullah as the son. But of the daughters, how many daughters do we have? Two. Uh, there's no record of whether Anisa accepted or not that I could find. 
But Shema, yes. Shema was taken captive amongst others on a particular expedition. And then when she was uh, 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 held back now with other, with other prisoners of war, you with me? She had an opportunity to speak to some of the Sahaba and she told them, I am the sister of your leader. So then they went to inform Rabbi Shalom, there's one lady here in this court here we never saw before in our lives. She said she's your sister. Rabbi Shalom asked them to describe her and then he went to the quarters where they were and he saw her and he called her. And he took her out uh, and sat in the tent and they spoke and he told Sahaba, this is my sister, Halima's uh, daughter. And then he offered her. He said, stay with us or go back. It's up to you. Set you free. And I'll set all those who are with you free. Your choice. He sent them all free, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Banu Sa'ad, who were taken captive because they were allies. They were in the mix with people who Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was at the expedition against. Anyway, she chose to go back because they knew better in life. And uh, he, he offered Islam to her. She accepted Islam. And then he, he let her go with gifts. Gave her things. So there was some interaction. But I always used to wonder and think did they ever, did their paths ever meet? And I thought, can you share this with you? He offered her to stay, but she preferred leaving. He gave her some gifts. Alhamdulillah. Okay. The Prophet Wasallam's mother's death. The, our book says she was about 20 years old when she passed away. So now, she is in Mecca with Abdullah's family still. She wants to introduce Nabi Muhammad Wasallam to his family from her side. And she was from where? She was from Medina. So she goes with him and <coughs> they say they spent about a month there. Spent about a month in Medina. Uh, the only person, other person who's with is Baraka. Who is Baraka? Baraka is the female slave of Abdullah. His father, the Nabi Muhammad Wasallam, inherited. But he was referred to her as his mother. She got the other kunya afterwards when she got the son. She named her son Ayman. So she became known as Ummu Ayman. But she was an Abyssinian woman. And she outlived Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anyway, so it's the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, young six year old. His mother Amina and Baraka. So they in Medina for about a month. He's introduced to his family. And you have narrations there that there was a large, a broader than normal well that the kids of Medina used to take a dip in at times. And he learned to swim there with them. That's why some say, I don't know what, that's why some say swimming is a sunnah. This is because he was a child. And we don't have a narration of him swimming afterwards. I, I, I don't know. I can see. I don't know. <laughs> but have you ever heard that? Sunnah to swim. It's a sunnah to swim. Wow. I don't know. But he swam at that age. There's narrations there, around six. But his mother fell ill. And then she wanted to go back to, because he was more comfortable in Makkah. He grew up there. And Yathrib, Yathrib was known as a place of, of fever for people who are not familiar with, this, with the atmosphere because of the oasis. Extra shade and extra water. It's a bit damper there. Um, on the way back in a place called Abwa, Amina passed away. And she has a marked grave there. A marked grave. And later, later, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was resident in Medina, when they had to go on a particular expedition, they had to pass by Abwa, and he was seen crying by this grave. So Haba asked him, why are you here? Who is this? It is my mother. I asked Allah permission that I seek forgiveness for her. Allah said no. I asked Allah permission that I visit and sit by a grave. Allah said yes. And that's something else. There's silence regarding those who passed away during the Fatra. What is the Fatra? The 6th century period, the 600 year period of silence between Nabi Isa and Nabi Muhammad when there were no messengers. So Allah knows best what's to happen to them. Some scholars say on the day of Qiyamah, they'll be, they'll be tested, they'll be given a question. And based on that, they may become recipients of mercy or not. Allah, dear sister, Ah, good. 
Abdullah is buried in Medina, and they say he was taken to visit his father's graveyard in Medina. There's a there's a a, a, a meeting place called Dar and Nabigha. But finding it now, Allah Alam. When I was there, uh, uh, not not this last Umrah, two years back, I asked one scholar there, and they didn't know because now, now uh, you know how all the old relics and sites are. But surprisingly, I told my father when I came back, this 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 came to my mind, and I never I never really took note. You know what? Old relics are still standing in Medina, and they take people to go see it. Is the is the is the old dilapidated castle of one of the Jews, Ka'ab bin al-Ashraf. And he comes down in the history. He was one who, who, who he was a poet too, and he used to form poetry against Islam. He made propaganda against But his castle, a Jura castle is still standing. But all the Muslim relics are thrown down. Allah yeah. Part of Jewish heritage, so maybe they have a hand in it. Part of their heritage. Allah knows best. But it, it was a space in Medina called Darun Nabiha. And Nabiha, Dar means a home, like you know. They would refer to it now. Sometimes they refer to clubs, meeting places. In the Arab world, there's a Dar. And Nabiha was buried there. And the Nabi Sallallahu was taken to visit his grave. <coughs> so Barakah is with him. They see to the burial. She's buried there. And Barakah takes him then back to Mecca. And he's with his grandfather. Abdul Muttalib loved him because he saw his son Abdullah in the grandson Muhammad. And more than that, some narrations have it that he, Abdul Muttalib, named him Muhammad. Okay? After the birth, I didn't mention this to you, but we have a narration there in your book, and Ibn Hisham, after the birth, when the boy was a bit was strong enough, he was called, Abdul Muttalib was called, he wrapped Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu up, the, the baby, and he took him to the Kaaba and entered the Kaaba with him. And prayed there, made dua. And he told everyone out, when he came outside, he told them, I named this boy Muhammad. Okay? Um, he obviously was fond of the Kaaba. Abdul Muttalib was fond of the Kaaba, obviously. The chief of that space. And he had the dream of where the Zamzam pit was. You know where he had the dream? The Russians say he had the dream when he dozed off either next to the, the Kaaba or in the Hijr Ismail. So the, his sons knew how much he loved the space there, so they had a special seat made for him next to the Kaaba that they did not dare sit on. Okay? Even, even Hamza was also young. He didn't dare sit on. But who did Abdul Muttalib allow? Because there were times when Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu would maybe go there and the other sons would say, no, you can't sit. And there's one narration, they say that Abdul Muttalib saw them deterring Muhammad وسلم, from sitting there and he told them, leave him to sit there. And then he said to them, there is a, there's a significant future for the son of mine. He did not refer to him as his grandson. He said, there's something special for the son of mine. Sit, let him sit here. So others, uh, they say, uh, 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 people have memories, uh, had, they narrate they had memories seeing Abdul Muttalib walking hand in hand with Muhammad and there were times when they would have huge meetings where the seniors would sit and he would allow Muhammad Sallallahu to sit there with him okay with all the elders so he drew from this and imagine growing up with this place of Abdul Muttalib as another aura and leader he was now on his deathbed he called Abu Talib Now, I'm sure of this. Abdullah, Abu Talib, and the third brother, Zubair. Sons of Abdul Muttalib, and the three of them shared a mother. So same father, same mother. Her name was Fatima. I love the name Fatima. No? <laughs> Fatima bin to Amr. <coughs> they shared a mother. So Abdul Muttalib, the Upa Haja, on his deathbed, calls Abu Talib and says I place Muhammad in, in your care if anything happens to me ok so there we have it there Abu Talib, why did he call Abu Talib because the same mother no. Abu Talib at that time was married to a woman also named Fatima <laughs> Fatima bin to Asad 
Her father's name was Asad. And what does Asad mean? A lion. Now, and Nabi Muhammad SAW speaks about her later. And he, when she passed away, he climbed with into her cover and he sat there with her crying. Her body. And he used to say, she was my mother after my mother. He says she used to give preference to me over her own children. She would rather see that I am fed before them. Yeah. Anyway, so Fatima bin Asad. And she accepted Islam. Abu Talib, we have issues with that. And Fatima was, they say she was the second woman to accept Islam. Who was the first woman? Khadija. Yeah. Fatima bin Asad. Anyway, they opened the doors for him and he was there like a son. <coughs> and, um, but the problem was this Abu Talib was not uh, going through uh, such good financial situation, uh, states. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started tending to some, some sheep for some uh, added income and goats for added income. And when Abu Talib was finally able to go on a business trip, he took Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with him. They say the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at this time was about 12 years old. So now the issue of the first journey beyond the borders of Mecca and Medina. They went to Sham, which is the greatest Syria. It includes Palestine, it includes Jordan, Hajjah, it includes Lebanon, and modern day Syria. So what happened? They came to an area where there was a small, uh, like a monastery. But in this monastery, there was only one man, one monk. And now the issue is this, there's, there's some difference of opinion. What was his name? Some say his name was Buhaira, isn't it? But now the Arabic students know uh, that, that the word for, for, for a sea is Bahar. Bahar. You also know Bahar. No. So you put that on the, on the smaller form, the military form, Buhair. It will be Buhair. And uh, our books have it that um, this, this monastery was on the bank of a lake. And Arabs don't have a word for a lake in, in Arabic. They use the word small sea. You with me? Small sea. So, so there's contention as to whether his name was Buhaira or was he known as the monk of the lake? The monk of the small sea, as his monastery was there. But you know, we'll have to go into this next week, inshallah. Um, uh, he was watching them, he narrates that he was watching them and he saw clouds moving and stopping when they stopped. And then moving when they moved. And stopping when they stopped. And he saw them take shelter under a tree and he claims, he visibly saw the, the branches of this tree lowering. So we see there's a group of more than 10, but amongst them there's someone special. Amongst them could be the final messenger. Okay? So when they were near, he sent one of his slave boys out to invite them for a meal. And in the first visit, all of them came but Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? They left him looking after the camels and stuff. So now he's speaking with them and he did not get that feeling. For what he wanted. He didn't see in their faces what he was looking for. So he asked, and Abu Talib sitting there. Now she said, anyone that's not here of your group? She said, no, no one. She said, no, but there's someone not here. She said, no, just the, 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 the young boy that's looking after our stuff. She said, don't call him too. So when he called him, he saw the calmness, the beauty, and the nur. So he asked the Talib, who is this from you? So he said, it's my son. So the, the monk said, can't be. <laughs> can't be. Because who is he really? He said, no, he's my brother's son, brother passed away. So then he spoke with him, they had a conversation, asked him a few things, and he asked to see his back. That's his for sure. So he, was, he was looking for seal. a seal. It was a physical seal. He is the seal of messengers, but Allah gave him a physical seal, meaning his body had something else to it, man. He was prepped for something else. Now, to take the divine. So, divine message. Um, when he saw that, 
this is this is the thing the invite the observations and lastly the advice he told abu talib don't go into certain areas with him because if the jews come to understand and see what he is they are hoping that the final messenger will come from them they might do something to this boy seeing as he's from the arabs take him back and look after him so the only other time we know of nabi sallallahu going into that region was later at the age of 25 when he went on a business trip for Sayyidah Khadija. But after that Abu Talib kept his eye on him and kept him staying in the Meccan region. Allah bless. So we see you next week inshallah make dua for barakah no time. Stay safe and du'as. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh